Okay, solar hot water systems. This is a very quick overview on what they actually are and how they work. Uh, we've got this solar hot water service on a house that we're renting at the moment and we had to get some service done on it and I was amazed. A couple of plumbers came around and it's just not something that's in their training. They had absolutely no idea of how the basics of it worked. Uh, I'm in the swimming pool industry, so solar is something that I have been trained in and what we've got here is extremely similar. And I'm going to talk to you about it in swimming pool terms to see if it can make sense to you. What we've got here, the big tank, is actually a um, just a storage tank, just a hot water storage tank. In the terms of the swimming pool industry, that would be your swimming pool, which is just the big vessel of water. And down under the cover here, we've got um, a motor and we've got a little solar controller or a control box coming out of here we've got the uh, power going into the motor and we've got the controller wire which goes up onto the solar panel so this is a sensor which senses how hot it is up on the roof basically so that when it, the sun is on the system will be running and uh, so that goes up to the roof and very conveniently my next door neighbor has exactly the same system so if we come over here and have a look there's the solar panel that's up on the roof and um, if you see up the top there, right there, you can see the sensor wire right in the middle of your screen. Um, that's the sensor going in, so it's a temperature sensor. When it's got potential to heat your pool, when the, heat your pool, sorry, I am a pool man, to um, heat your hot water service, it, the pump will turn on, it'll flow water through. So you've got your, your coming and going pipes running into the base of it, um, and it will bring that hot water back. So that's what's up on your roof, the bit you probably can't see in a lot of instances. And there's the key bits of it. There's a, a sensor. You make sure that sensor is not wrapped around a hot water return wire is a common fault. I spoke to the uh, chromogen service guy when he came out and he said that was a very common fault with these things and those sensor wires get destroyed. And funnily enough on the chromogen unit, that is just an RCA plug, as in what you've got on your stereo. Um, so they're ones you can get yourself and repair. So that's the system that's up on the roof. The lower pipes there are your hot water um, coming in and going out to your storage tank. And there's a sensor up the top which is simply checking the temperature. So coming back to the hot water service, uh, what we have here is the storage tank. So going into the wall on our place, from the storage tank, you can see the water draws out of the tank here it goes through this flexible pipe and it goes into the motor this is the base of the motor here and it drives up then going up onto the roof and then here is where it returns from the roof so look for your insulated ones they should have the hot water in them and so it returns from the roof here and goes into the tank again this needs some maintenance see the rust that's on there just um, cover that up with a bit of you know newspaper and stuff around the back so don't make a mess but just get a pressure pack of some paint um, I mean, uh, rust-based paint, of course, would be best, but just stop the water from getting onto that and corroding it. That'll just give you a lot longer life and have that fitting last a bit longer. But uh, it's looking pretty sad, that one there. So that's the basis of it. That In swimming pool terms, you would have the big tank there is your swimming pool and the pump, when there's potential to heat the pool, it gets that water out of that storage tank, runs it up onto the roof and heats the water, it returns back into that same tank. So the pump is just recirculating that water around the tank. And that's a separate system um, to your actual hot water, like a normal system. These guys up here are your normal hot water system. So you've got here, this, this guy here, it's just a pressure relief valve. If we let that go and look down there at the bottom, we open that up, you see that hasn't been done for a while. Um, it says on it that it's good to periodically do that uh, but that's a pressure relief valve that is there um, so that if something goes wrong and the tank overheats and there's too much pressure instead of the tank blowing up it'll release out there and um, just giving that a little bit of a run uh, once a month or something like that make sure it's open and working save your tank from splitting and blowing up that's what that guy's for and the water coming in here's the water right here coming in and um, so that supply water there comes in and goes in to the tank uh, here and it comes out of the tank here, just like a normal hot water service. 
So what this storage tank is all about, these are gas boosted. So that's the solar side of it. So the solar does as much as it can to heat the water and will get that storage tank full of hot water, just like a gas would, but a gas would have a flame under it heating it up. Then when it comes out of the solar, here's where it gets interesting. It comes out of the solar and it runs through that black pipe and it goes into, what do we have here? We have what's called an instantaneous gas heater up on top. So this is not a, a gas storage hot water service where it fills up a big tank. This just heats the water as it passes through it. Um, so it's only using the gas that you're actually using. So of course the idea is that when the water's hot, uh, this guy won't turn on, it'll just run through hot water. And then when this runs out, if you've had five showers in a row or something and there's been no sun to reheat it, then never fear because this guy can heat your water so if, it, if the solar feeds warm water in, the gas heater doesn't have to do much. And if the solar um, is feeding cold water in, there's been no heating take place, then this guy has, gas heater has to do everything and has to warm the heater up. So the downside of this system, if you've got teenage kids, is the hot water is never going to run out. It will, it will literally never run out. That instantaneous heater will just turn on and run and always continuously supply your hot water. So that's a good sign. Now. That's just the basics. That's what I'm doing in this video. I want to do another video with more information um, about how to have this system running when you've got a, a situation where you've got a good hot summer. Uh, the Chromogen serviceman came, that came around gave me a tip on a way to make this free so that you can run it without the gas turning on at all and um, save yourself some money. And I've been doing that over the last six weeks and it's absolutely working a treat and I know it saved us quite a bit of money. So I'll do another video on that one, I just want to keep this one topic as to what it is, which is just the basics. So the heater, um, the storage tank that's here, stores the potential that's been grabbed from the solar heater, which is coming in and out of those solar pipes, running up to, that's my neighbor's one, but mine's exactly the same on the other side of the house, the solar panel. Now, the solar panel on the right hand side of the screen there, that's actually generating electricity, that's different. I'm talking about the hot water solar panel, which is the small one there sitting in the middle. So that's the basics of it. And uh, they really are an excellent way to go. They're expensive to buy, but they really do save lots of energy.